Tonight, new tropical depression has formed in the eastern Pacific. around the wide world of tropics. Tropic Water Bulletin for August 14th. So looking at the world of tropics today, we see that Tropical Depression 10E has developed in the Eastern Pacific today. The remnants of 3A persist in the Arabian Sea, just off the coast of India, and Miri is almost post-tropical off the coast of Japan, moving rapidly off towards the northeast. In the North Atlantic, it's day 75 of the hurricane season over there. We are continuing to monitor Invest 98L, which we are getting a 20% chance of development over the next really 48 hours as it closes in on the southeastern coast of Texas, delivering some much needed rainfall to the area. It could become a brief tropical depression. In the eastern Pacific, there are no other areas of interest other than uh, tropical depression 10E, which is forecast to live around 36 hours only and could become a brief tropical storm as it has a few hours to intensify. We'll have to see if it ends up doing that. In the western Pacific, we are continuing to monitor tropical storm Mir. You can just see off the top of your screen there, moving rapidly off towards the northeast. And we're also continuing to monitor Invest 91W with a 10% chance of development as it moves off towards the north and could pass close to Taiwan as a developing tropical cyclone. We'll wait and see on that as a medium range. In the North Indian Ocean, we are continuing to monitor X3A, which was a brief tropical storm but has been generated to remnant loaded wind, high wind shear in the area and it's not evident to do much other than just sit there and just maneuver around in the Arabian Sea. Looking at the satellite imagery right now for the Eastern Pacific, you can see right there is Tropical Depression 10. Um, very much a sheer tropical cyclone to it, but it is a, a Tropical Depression now officially nonetheless. Um, some brief identification is possible over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours, as this system might have a few hours to show us what it's made of before it really gets uh, torn to shreds with that higher wind shear up towards its north. It's moving very slowly right now, uh, and that is going to be a general factor throughout its entire life. Moving on to the satellite imagery, here we have the North Atlantic. You can see Invest 98L and its influence is quite large over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, looks like a frontal feature off the southeastern U.S. moving over foot portions of Florida, such weather statements over there and a very interesting large thunderstorm southeast of Bermuda. Um, nothing to, nothing to tropicality beside 90L in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Tropical Depression 10E taking center stage here in the Eastern Pacific. No other areas of interest are uh, going to be forecasted to form over the next five days. Though beyond that, we could be seeing something along the coast of Mexico if the medium range models are to be believed. More on that in a few minutes. Looking at the Western Pacific, you can just see the massive influence of Invest 91W. You can also see Miri moving off Japan and the top of your screen there. Uh, lots of monsoonal activity here in the Western Pacific, but if I had to guess, 91W probably not going to develop, but it does bear monitoring nonetheless, as it does pose some rainfall threat towards portions of northern Luzon and Taiwan and maybe even southeastern China. In the Indian Ocean, you might be able to make out the low-level center of Invest or what was 3A in the Northern Arabian Sea there. Um, very much a monsoonal activity over the uh, Bay of Bengal, uh, probably not going to become much. In the Southern Hemisphere, equally as quiet. It's all quiet here. I mean, who really is expecting like, much activity here in the Southern Hemisphere besides maybe 1S, which surprised us a few weeks ago. Uh, we're not really expecting much in terms of activity down here for the next few months as we are in the Northern Hemisphere. He's not the Southern Hemisphere. Looking at the sea surface temperatures right now, Eastern Pacific a little bit on the cool side of things. Um, I'm sure that the Eastern Pacific once 10 e is gone will be completely shut down, unfortunately, in those East Pacific fanboys down, including myself. Uh, North Atlantic warming up quite nicely. Gulf of Mexico equally as hot. Main development region warming up quite nicely. And But you notice the subtropics of the Atlantic, very warmer than average. Uh, we'll see the sea surface temperatures anomalies just here in just a moment, uh, just to notice how warm those sea surface temperatures are in the northern Atlantic. They are very, very warm. Looking over on the other side of the globe, Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, equally as warm. Uh, Western Arabian Sea, not as warm, though, due to the monsoon over there. Uh, Western Pacific, though, across the board, really very much um, sea surface temperature-wise, infavorable of tropical cyclone development. But it has been a very quiet season over there so far. Only two typhoons have formed so far 
uh, Chaba. I forget that one name. It was the first one this this season. I'm sure we'll remember it. Uh, um, but very quiet season so far. But we are expecting a uptick in activity going into the next few months in the Western Pacific. So here's the temperature of average anomalies. Look at the North Atlantic in the subtropics. Much warmer than average, but you can see a very pronounced La Nina taking place across the tropical Pacific, and maybe some signs of a El Nino developing there in the southeastern uh, East Pacific near the equatorial regions to the northwest of South America. Uh, Western Pacific, uh, warmer than average, just a little bit. Ocean heat content across the uh, Atlantic is looking generally towards the Caribbean Sea and maybe even the central Gulf of Mexico, so there might be some spots to look out for for a major hurricane this year. And ocean heat content across the Western Pacific, across the board, really, in the Philippine Sea especially, well above normal. So, um, would not surprise me if we do have a strong tropical cyclone with low wind shear and high relative humidity moving to that area, take, take some good advantage of those, see if you can just lots of wait and see on that though. Looking at the computer model, this is for the next five days. You can see the remnant circulation of 10E there to the west of Socorro Island, sort of just meandering around there for a few days. Um, GFS does not bring this up to a tropical storm, nor does the NHC's forecast actually. Uh, but there is the off chance that this could become a brief tropical storm. We'll have to wait and see what this storm does as it bears monitoring. Uh, not really too much of a land threat over the next five days regarding 10E. And looking at the rainfall threat here, this is for both 10E and 98L. Uh, regarding 10E, you can see it's the moisture content mostly remains offshore. So we're not really, not really going to be seeing much land risk from 10E, but 98L going to be bringing some much, much needed rainfall for Southern Texas. The drought there in Texas is off the charts right now. Um, I know that Nathan and I were talking about that a few days ago. The drought there is absolutely incredible, and any rainfall that they can get there will be much needed relief there, and so N98L is going to help with that a little bit. Getting into the longer range, this is where things get a little bit more uncertain. You can see towards that sort of loop there, what was actually Invest 91W plowing, uh, well, moving swiftly into southeastern China, the west of Taiwan, right there, you can see it. Um, and then you can also see maybe something try to form off of this big front that comes through or dips down, we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, but once 91W is going to be out of here, things are going to get probably really quiet across the Western Pacific, uh, other than maybe some surprise formations that might happen every once in a while. But Western Pacific, once 91W is gone, it's going to be pretty quiet. Same can be said with the East Pacific and maybe even the tropical Atlantic. So maybe we're entering a little bit of a quiet period around the globe here. Um, nothing tries to form here. Maybe something d tries to develop in the Gulf of Mexico medium range. But like I've said, this, this kind of thing is extremely uncertain. And I wouldn't, I would take this with a grain of salt. That, well, that means it's basically don't trust this model run at all. This is just one model run and this probably won't actually happen, but it certainly does bear monitoring. It is a signal that we are getting towards an active period to mid-August. Mid Just going to plug our merch store here real quick. You can visit our merch store. Uh, you can see on that QR code where we do have many things of offer. And you can even buy some 413 merch, including that pillow over there. Thank you, Nathan. Getting into the southern range, uh, nothing really shocking sending out like a big typhoon or anything, but we do have this interesting mess that tries to develop here in the Western Pacific, or maybe several areas of low pressure that try to develop here in the Western Pacific. Of course, they don't really become of much. Um, but of course, this, this is the long range, uh, 240 hours out plus. Um, so probably not gonna become much, but this is just very fascinating to see that this is happening on the GFS. Nothing other than that on the silly range from the GFS, that is. Of course, we'll have to wait and see if any of this actually forms. So looking at the on this day here, we have uh, uh, back in 1915, we had Major Hurricane 2, which would eventually make landfall in Galveston as a Category 4, and on this day, which would make Cuba as a Category 4. Earlier this year, we actually did produce a 1915 Atlantic Hurricane season animation. I actually produced that. Uh, go watch it if you haven't already. It was a very fantastic uh, animation, and of course, we also did have another major hurricane, which was like Cuba and Louisiana later on in the season. But that's it for 1915. Nothing was else active. Nothing else was active around the world on this day in 1915 besides just that main Category 4 near the western coast of Cuba. So, looking at the naming list, next up in the Atlantic list, we're still waiting on it, believe it or not. Danielle, still. Followed by Earl. In the Eastern Pacific, could be about to happen. Yvette, or Yvette, I think is how it's pronounced, would be next up, followed by Javier, and then K. I'm not even going to mention the other one. 
uh, in the Western Pacific, we're waiting on Ma'on, followed by Tokaj. Uh, th I believe those were last used in 2017 or 2016, believe it or not. Uh, followed by Hinam Nor. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're still waiting out for Citrang, followed by Mandus. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're still waiting out on Darien in the Australian region. In the South Indian Ocean, the next name is Ashley, followed by Balita. And in the South Pacific, it will be Hale. We'll have another Tropic Warlord Bulletin covering Naini and Miri tomorrow night.